Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. Now, other than TV presentation, you also act and you also uh, anchor e e events. You know, how did you also come about all those? These are, we are talking about things that, these are, how do I say, they are all related. Okay. Acting is a form of communication. Okay. Presenting uh, events, traditionally, Events have always been compared by broadcasters in Nigeria. That is, I mean, that is the, that's the, that's the tradition. It still holds true till today, uh, until we, uh, until we nurtured some people who call themselves stand-up comedians, who have uh, entered into the business. But traditionally, broadcasters are the ones who anchor events. That's the way. It has always been. Before me, there was Ralph Opara, there was Ikin and Aguba, there was Yinka Krieg. So it's not, there was Bisiola Tilo. So it's not a strange thing that one would be anchoring events. But the acting part of it came about while I was working as a continuity announcer in NTA. You, go, you know, like when you were in those days, that the TV station officially opened maybe about 4 p.m. And if you are the continuity announcer, you have to start work at 4 p.m. But usually you have to get there earlier than 4 p.m. to prepare. You know, I told you about preparation. You prepare. So you get there maybe about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And whilst you're there for 1 o'clock, you're preparing. So when I get there early to prepare, you, you'll be noticing in those days, NTA used to do dramas. We used to shoot dramas inside the studios. So people will do their rehearsals. So I'm in an office and I'm seeing people doing rehearsals. Ah, rehearsals for... Uh, drama. I just ah. So one occasion, I just said, "Give me scripts to make me say follow and act now," and that was how it started. But doing the play of the week with NTA and what have you. So that's where the drama part of it came about. But it is part of being in that atmosphere where one was working as a broadcaster. Interesting. Interesting. Now, any up and coming broadcaster. Who wants to excel? Who wants to ex uh, uh, succeed? Who wants to be well known? What must the person do? Don't want to be well known. That's what the person must do. Do not desire yeah. to be well known. Desire to be a good broadcaster. Desire to be someone who speaks well. Desire to be somebody who is competent and skillful. Be well known will follow later. But don't don't make being well known your your goal. You know uh, how they say in the in the Bible, seek you first the kingdom of God, and all those things will be added. So seek you first competence as a broadcaster, and well known will be added unto you. Now, I, I I want to delve a little into your childhood. You know, and that's because um, it, 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 there are some complex things there. That I need you to shed more more, more, more light on. But for some time. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. no I'm right. coming. Right. I, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I know for a fact, or rather, in the course of reading up on you, I got to know that you grew up in Ailara in Surule. I was born there. I didn't grow up in Ailara. I was born there. I returned okay. to Ailara as a young adult. Okay. So, what fun memories of. Your days in Ailara, would you like to share with us? Okay, let me let me say this. I was actually born on Ailara Street. My mother was a widow. Her husband had died before I was born. My father had died before I was born, and she, her husband died in Zaria. He was buried in Zaria, so she moved to Lagos to live with a relation, with a pregnant woman moved to Lagos to live with a relation on Ailara Street where invariably I was born. And this, this woman, great woman, my mom, after she had me, she had to start to work for the first time in her life. 
she had to find a job. And she got a job. She worked with, uh, I, I forget the, the name of the company now. It was uh, an estate agency, Fox & Co. She got a job with Fox & Co. Because she had a little bit of Fox and & Fox and Co. Fox and, yeah, Fox & Co. Fox & Co. X. Okay, yes, Fox. which is now uh, Osage, Kiniko, 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 and just whatever, whatever. But it was called Fox and Co. So she got a job. She had this little baby and about five other children to to take care of. Take. And she worked hard. For Fox and Co, she, she worked in Nigerian breweries. And she worked pretty hard. We moved from staying in those very, very limited quarters in Ailera into more befitting accommodation. But I grew up essentially on Off Adeni Rogusonya. In, in a beautiful bungalow with my mother, hard-working woman who had never walked until after she had her last child. And uh, so I had a very good middle-class upbringing as a young boy. I grew up in the same neighborhood with the likes of uh, uh, Otumbani and Debayo. These are, these are people who grew up together, uh, Donald Duke. In that Sule, local, uh, that Sule area, that, that axis of Sule. Uh, all, everybody, accomplished people, went, everybody went to a good school. I went to St. Finbar's College. This one went to CMS Grammar School. The other one went to Federal Government College, wherever. But I'm just saying, I grew up in a beautiful middle-class neighborhood. But as a teenager, my DNA took me back to my Ailara. Ailara at this time was probably one of the toughest areas in Lagos. So whilst my friends were busy doing Ajebota, I found myself with the with the boys, the gangs, as it were. You know, and I I I I will be I will be telling you a life. I say I didn't enjoy the excitement of growing up on the streets because those that that was what you call streets. From there, I so everything that everything that happens on the streets today, I. Got a taste of it, you know. That I mean, as a teenager in my early in my in my late teens, I found my way back to this, the, the streets of Ailara. At the time I was born, Ailara was a cool, nice area. But by the time I was in my teens, Ailara was. In fact, we used to call Ailara Street itself. Its name was Forty Second Avenue. It was a red light district when I was a teenager, and that was where I got my street credibility. <laughs> okay, we didn't indulge in all those uh, rascally things, smoking, patronizing uh, women I, of, uh, I mean, I, easy virtue I, and stuff. Big man, I did everything that young men did. Everyone, but it's not, it's not anything to be proud of, but, but yeah, but I, I am glad for it because I left it early too. I left all of those things a long time ago. The last time I took alcohol was 30, we're going on 36 years ago. Wow. So wow. it's not, uh, but I, I, I had my fair share of the streets. And when I say I had my fair share, I'm talking about very serious matters, not this. I'm talking about the, 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 the main, the main, not, uh, I'm not, well, I'm not proud of it, but I can assure you that. There's nothing on the streets that's happening now that's that's making me that I'm afraid of. All right, all right. Now, now your, your, your parentage. I don't know how to describe it as mixed or complex or you know yeah. how, how how would you sum it up? You know, Lagos, uh, Isekiri, uh, Calabar. Uh, you know, how, how would you sum up your parentage? I like it. I, I like it. I like to be able. I, I like the fact that I have a very diversified uh, antecedents. My grandfather was an Irish man. He married okay. an Ishekiri princess, okay. and they had two children. My father and his sister. She died pretty early. My father died earlier also. So I'm just saying. And my father married an Efik princess, and they had me. So I have antecedents in Calabar courtesy of my mother, I have antecedents in Wari, courtesy of my father, and I have antecedents in Ireland, courtesy of my father also, whose uh, father was an Irish uh, gentleman who married an Ishakiri princess. So 
I'm very, very proud of my heritage. And uh, I'm proud to even say that my, as I said, I have, I cannot be prouder of my heritage. I come from the royal families in Wari and in Calabar. It doesn't get any better than that. And these are the two, probably the two most civilized ethnicities in Nigeria in terms of, in the Western sense of the word, of, in the Western sense of the word. So I, I'm, 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 I'm a very happy man. I'm not, I'm not intimidated by anybody. There's nobody's, nobody's uh, pedigree can intimidate me because I, <laughs> I have royal antecedents and I have street I have street credibility. Credibility. Interesting. Interesting. Now would it be correct? <clears throat> you know, I, I know you're very close to Pastor Chris Okoti, eh? and I know that you've been a householder for a very long time. Would it be that I, I also know that you're a born again Christian? Would it be correct to say that the vicissitudes of life pushed you into becoming a uh, born again i mean considering some of the challenges you 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 have gone through or was it something you 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 decided out of your own volition you know to embrace i just told you i grew up in a middle class neighborhood my contemporaries are donald duke otumba nia debayo those are my you understand what I, mean? I was not disadvantaged in any way form or fashion I, I became a, a broadcaster at an early age. I did well. No, it, frustration did not lead me to Jesus Christ. It was the love of God that, 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 talk, that, was, that was, how do I say it, summoning me. It was, it was, there was I had no, how can I, if you're talking about the vicissitudes, I got, it was after I became a Christian that I visited vicissitude. <laughs> you know, so no, 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 I was, I became a Christian very, very consciously. I did a normal stock taking, and I just said to myself, "This is not the best life," because I was, I was going nowhere fast, and it was just a form, normal stock taking. I was working at the time. I was working in NT as a continuity announcer when I became a Christian. My life was even. How do I said I was just shedding. I had shed the streets. I had. I had uh, I, how do I said without being a Christian, I had repented of street life. I stopped going to nightclub and all of that, and I, I faced my work as a broadcaster, as a uh, as a presenter, as uh, on television, and I was doing radio shows and I was doing voiceovers for adverts and what have you. So my life was. I was. Uh, I was getting back my life, but in the stock, in the, in the process of getting back my life, I did a stock taking, and I looked at some of my friends who were Christians, and I saw the, one of whom was even Chris Okotie, because whilst whilst I was a, in the early stages of my broadcast career, is when I met him, and I was still on the streets at that time, but I remember that he became a Christian, and a few other people I knew became a Christian, and I saw the difference in their lives. I just said, hey, let me try, let's try this, you know, this food. And it, and it has worked so far, it has worked. Okay.